What is up, y'all? Welcome back to the Silver Stud series. You guys are due an update. I apologize for the big uh, lull here since the playoff disappointment. Main reason was it was deadline week, and I'm a fantasy baseball writer, if you don't know. So I was writing up all those trades and the fantasy implications therein, and so I just didn't really have time to update. Plus... The way things are going, you can see right here on the screen, we're 96 and 55. I didn't feel like it was like mission critical that I had to get y'all updated because things were going so well. And we are locked for the playoffs. We're going to get in there. So really what we need to do is review what, what's happened this season and get the team set up because we cannot have another disappointment like that. So let's do our normal team review and see what's going on. Uh, let's start at the catching position, and we see that it's been rough, man. John Roseboro was an absolute G last year. I mean, he basically did kind of a Mitch Garver imitation. Well, maybe that's the bad, uh, the a bad example because Mitch Garver hit like 33 homers. What I mean by that though is he has he had four wins above replacement, four WAR in 93 games. I think Garver had something similar where he played like 95 games and he had about four WAR. I'm actually gonna look it up real quick and see what he did in that 2019 season. 93 games, exactly, and 3.9 war, four war. You round up, that 3.9, that precision is unnecessary. We call that a four war season. So he basically was Mitch Garver, again, Garver hit 31 homers, he hit nine, but the bottom line, the war is what I'm talking about in such a concentrated amount of games. That's amazing. He's gone all the way down to a half win in 93 games again. So again, the timing has worked out really well here that he happens to have 93 games both times, but the results have been bad. And you look here, the Babbitt plays a big role. And this is why a lot of times when you look at Babbitt batting average on balls in play, you can get a lot of information about a player's season. And sometimes people use it as a luckometer, and I don't like that. Like if you're tracking a high Babbitt, an unsustainably high one, like something over 400, you've been lucky and it will come back to earth. But if you have a low one, sometimes you've been on the unlucky side. The problem is it's not as easy as that, right? You can't look at the 384 and say, oh, he was super lucky, he was never gonna sustain. He's a high contact guy. Uh, well, not high contact, he has 68 contact, but 71 avoid case, like he puts the ball in play. So that's going to fuel a good BABIP overall. 384 does go pretty high though, especially for somebody with 18 speed. On the other end though, 20, 280 is pretty darn low. Bottom line is he, he should probably be somewhere in the middle. You look at his career numbers, 333. And if he, was, if he had a 784 OPS right now, we'd be feeling pretty good about it, but he doesn't. And John, uh, Buddy Rosar is not much better. He's got double the war basically, but that's only because of his defense because his offense is just as crappy and he's not hitting well against either side, neither is Roseboro. We have to address this. In fact, they need to reverse their platoon. I think I have Rosar starting against lefties. At the very least, oh, I don't, okay. At the very least, to maximize them, I should put Rosar starting against righties to get his 84 in there, and then Roseboro against lefties for his 83. But they're both trash. So we need to see where we're at with these two and, and if we wanna keep them around. I'll tell you what. Rosar has the better chance to stick around as the backup at the very least because of his defense. I like Roseboro's catcher ability. It, it's enough to hang, but not with this offense. So I think he's in some trouble here as far as sticking with this club. Let's see where we're at with our catchers in reserve here. Now we do have Petway, Booney, and uh, Beckwith who's on the team, but he has a one catching rating. That, that does not count. That should not be listed under catchers. That's not a viable catcher. We got double duty. We got double duty here who could play. He's got a 61 ability, 66 arm, some decent hitting. And then Austin Nola. So these are sorted by price because I was cleaning up my inventory on my main account. Let's sort by overall here. Petway is somebody I did get with intent. Now he only has a 65 ability, but that's not much different than Roseboro. He has a much better arm and he has similar stats where he's not big for power, but contact and avoid Ks. I think there's the switch. There's the obvious switch right there. Booney and his defense are pretty nice. Also similar, but he's he's pretty slow. So let's go ahead and get that speed in there. Let's let's get Petway in for the rest of this month. Um, you know, it's not gonna. It's just gonna be a handful of games. But then gear up for him with with a playoff run. And if he does well enough, he could be our primary starter. So let's go ahead and get Roseboro. 
get smoked. How do I, uh, how do I transact him off the team? I thought you could do it from that screen. My bad. Yoink. He gone. And then Petway, you're in. Buddy Rosar, you survive, okay? However, you just lost your job against righties. You had that starting job. You are still going to play pretty frequently, though, and you're going to be the defensive substitute, okay? How about that? I'm talking to nobody. I'm talking to Pixels right now. Not even Pixels. He doesn't even have a pixelated player. He's literally a virtual card. Don't worry about it, okay? Does Petway have any sort of big platoon? He is better against righties, but... It's not really that noticeable. I think Rosar is better against lefties, but he hasn't been this year. But ratings-wise, he is a decent bit better. So I'll um, I'll give him every second game against lefties. All right, so catching addressed. Let's see where we're at elsewhere. Joe Rudy continues to be a stalwart for this team. One of our primary power sources. Only has 20 yaks on the year, but I'm not complaining. This is a hell of a line, a 133 WRC+. Plus, Three war, over 100 ribs. He's doing his thing. I respect it. Thank you, Joe Rudy. Second base, Pete Rose here. Pete Rose is decimating lefties and quite good against righties. Zero complaints. You're not going anywhere. Thank you. Now, Oliver Marcel, when I checked in earlier in the week, was playing very well. Looks like he's continued to do so. So he has taken some games from Rose just to kind of give... Rose a little breather there, not that there is, um, what, never mind, I almost said something very stupid, I was gonna say not that there is stamina, yes there is, you idiot, uh, but anyway, Marcel's been, been playing well enough that he deserves to get in those games, in fact, he's been getting in all over the infield here, uh, because of how well he's been playing, I do think that with as well as Rose has been playing, I wanna make sure, okay, he's not every fifth game against lefties, I don't know, He's been worse against lefties. Soul White has been the only the only people he's doing well against are lefties. But I'm gonna yoink this out. I'm gonna put this here, and then if tired, I want Rose in there against lefties as much as he can. I know it's only 49 games, 22 started, 104 plate appearances, and a crazy 452 BABIP. But let's ride this till it can't go anymore. A 221 WRC plus is hot to trot. So I regret saying hot to trot. The minute the minute it finished leaving, I wanted to reel it back in. Because why would you say hot to trot? What are you, a 74-year-old man? Stop. I kind of am, though. So I guess it fits. Brooks is holding his own via defense. And his offense has come around. I believe he started off the season pretty poorly. And I just trusted him. Yeah, 750 is okay, but 593 is dreadful. He started to turn around in the summer. He's been a little bumpy here in August and then bounced back. In, actually, here in September. We're in September now. But in August, he was bumpy again, back on track. He does his thing, right? The ebbs and flows of a season, zero complaints. Um, and love the defense that he provides at third base. He is not going anywhere. In fact... I think maybe Marcel should be getting a couple fewer games away from Brooks because he's playing really well. Against lefties, though, we will get, we will do this. Eh? Let's try that out for size. And where's Marcel's defense against third, uh, for third baseman? Right there. So we can do that. And then Brooks can mix in against, the, against lefties to see if he can get his back going a little bit. But as it stands right now, he really isn't performing. So let's make him our primary guy against righties and then just mixing in against lefties. And we'll still keep this at, at mm, every fifth game. Every fifth game. Back with at short. Pardon me, got a little something in the old eye there. Uh, Beck with is having a hell of a year. He is just obliterating lefties like you wouldn't believe and doing quite well against righties as well. All good. We love that. Big thumbs up. Marcel playing every sixth game there. That's fine. He deserves to mix in still because, again, he's playing well this year. And Marcel's defense is, what was that, 71 to 68 to 63. So it is better. That's why he's also the defensive stu stub. The defensive sub. Now the outfield. Remember the outfield was a, a massive strength last year with Tucker, Rios, and Kane killing it in the outfield. And then Kirilov, who is an outfielder, also dominating at DH. Um, not everything has maintained there. One weak link. And you guys aren't blind. You can see who it is. Tucker's got five wins above replacement. He's awesome. 
all good there. He has improved upon his season from last year. We love where we're at with Tuck. Kane, league average hitter, but such a good defender that he has three wins. Love what you're doing there, Lorenzo. Keep it up. We need that defense in center field. Rios, one of the best players in the league. I got to imagine that he is in the running for MVP. 18 homers, 81 ribs, buck 04 on the runs, 58 swiperinos, which was worse, hot to trot or swiperinos. They were both bad. And if you click off the video, I kind of get it. I hope you don't, but you probably should because that was terrible. It was awful. Six wins, though. We're loving it. Rios, I, I have a hard time envisioning Rios not being on this team for the duration of, of, of this entire experiment or, or project, as it were. Uh, I love him. I've explained that. You know, I'm a huge fan of his uh, uh, when he played, I should say. Uh, and this card has just been killing it. Kirilov, weakest link by a lot. How? How do you have this kind of transformation? Now, listen, I'm a, I'm a baseball diehard. I just mentioned how my job is writing and talking about fantasy baseball. Uh, I stream baseball stuff all the time. I, I eat drink, sleep, live, breathe baseball. So I understand guys have ups and downs. I mean, go look at the, the trajectory of like a Cody Bellinger um, or even a Christian Yelich with what the struggles he's been undertaking uh, recently. Like it happens, but they have the excuse of injury, both those guys specifically. We don't have injuries in this game. So what the hell's going on? Another good, uh, good timing here that were right at the exact amount of at-bats and one fewer plate appearance. So the comparisons are very easy, and yet he has completely fallen off. He's dropped 100 points on his BABIP, and it has completely, completely robbed him of any value. He is not very good against righties and just shouldn't be on the field against lefties. I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, Alex. I think you're gone. You were so good last year. You got uh, the platinum stick at DH. You were an all-star despite giving away a month. Remember, I started in May basically building this team and that he still was able to do those things to now you're dreadful. So what happened? I don't know, but hey, baby, we got to win in the playoffs. We got to get some things figured out and we can't have you dragging, dragging us down in the middle of the batting order. It's a gots to go situation. I'm gonna go ahead and put you on the reserves and you're out. See ya. Now, Marcel playing every third game there. So he plays third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I, I have the perfect solution. I've already got it. I'm already ready. It's a guy I've been waiting, waiting. I've been basically waiting for somebody to flop. Uh, everyone's on notice and I'm like, the second somebody flops, we're making this trade, this, this move. Ike Boone. I love this card, man. Now, he's only 73, so you're like, well, what are you what are you what are you freaking out about? Relax. He's a 73 though because he's incredibly slow and remarkably inept at defense because he's a, he's a DH. He's a DH through and through. This hitting for a silver slaps. He he he, he can get it uh, against both sides. He bats lefty, but he does not really struggle against them. He is worse but not to a degree that I'm like, he's unplayable. I mean, it is it is a marked dip, but again, all my experience with this card, which is a, a ton of perfect drafts, says that he's great. And I'm excited to see what he can do here. Get him some, get his feet wet here during the uh, remainder of the season, and then take it off, take off in the playoffs, baby. Let's go. Ike Boone, welcome to the squadron. All right, get him in at DH there. And then Kane wasn't even playing, or I mean, Kirilov wasn't even playing against lefties. Uh, otherwise, he was just mixing in. So I'm going to put him there. We're going to take a look at adverse lefty. Well, let's see. Tucker. Tucker's not coming out of the lineup. Kane actually does his best work against lefties. Not that Boone would go there. And actually, Reigns can't. So basically, the fact that Tucker, and of course, Rios is, means that Boone is only going to be playing against righties as a starter. 
He will go ahead and mix in every third game against lefties. Because um, Reigns, you know, he hasn't been so good that he can't come out. In fact, he's probably playing too much against righties. He's only started 36 games, though. So it's okay. Where what's, Where's he getting that playing time? He's just mixing in. Oh, he's a pinch hitter, so he probably gets a plate appearance a game at least. And then maybe comes in when Tuck's tired. Okay, fine. But anyway, Booney, you're in. You're good. I'm going to do this, though. Marcel, you're just going to come in when he's tired. I want to get him as many plate appearances, particularly against righties, as we can um, with the remainder of the season, which is obviously not that much. Tucker, as a pinch hitter, is funny, but he doesn't... He doesn't uh, I think, that was, I think that was still left over from last year when he wasn't a starter against lefties. But that has changed. We can also do this. Put Reigns here. So when Tuck's tired, Reigns will move in, and then Booney will get games there as well. One problem is we don't really have a backup outfielder. And right as I say that, I see that Soul White can play some right. And problem fixed, baby. All good. It's all good. From Diego to the Bay. And then at first base, we can put Petway there. Or should we put Beckwith? Excuse me. Oh, that, look at that. Petway can also play right field. I forgot about that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Beckwith and primary shortstop. He is better at first base. Here, I'll do this. I'll do this. Oh, wait. He's already the defensive sub. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Ignore me. I'm dumb. All right. That's the offense. We're good to go. We can take a look at verse left just to see a little bit more of a composite view. How everyone's doing. Petway hasn't played, so that doesn't really count. Everybody else doing their thing. Lefties, they don't want to face us, man. I bet we're really good against lefties based on those numbers. I guess it depends on the pitching. And then against righties, the only one who's like really, really struggling now is Kane. And his defense makes up for it, so all good there, brother. The team is set offensively. We're, we're ready to rock. Let's get some more games in. Finish off strong here. We've still got a good handful of games, right? we got to play playing some into October. Three more into October. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm an idiot. Oh, my God. I don't even want to tell you the math that I like mentally was doing in my head there to suggest to my dumb brain that we had way more than the number of games that we have. I'm not even going to say it because it's super embarrassing. But we basically have two weeks left. And that's fine. That's enough for Booney to get locked in. Can we can we ruin anybody's playoff chances? Can, can we be jerks? <laughs> Who do we play that's left? We've got uh, one against... Uh, is this Tokyo? I clicked on it. Hello? Tokyo Samurai. Okay, they're garbage. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to curb stomp them. Then we got that team. I just looked at them. They're not that good. What about this? At P. At P. You any good? Pacific Carp. Oh, God, they're so dreadful. We better not lose a single game to them. And then we play the E team again here. So we have an easy schedule the rest of the way. We could win out, to be honest. Nobody would be surprised if we won out. Did we get any crazy achievements that I didn't get to see? Um, we, got some, we got some silver ones. That's cool. I'm just looking for anything like crazy. Oh, oh, Zach Thompson. Zach Thompson. Oh, I wait. I thought that was multiple games. Did he throw two no-hitters? I'm an idiot. No. But he did throw a no-hitter, which is dope. Um, okay, that's it. I mean, I guess I can look. Where else can I look at the achievements? Only silver ones this year. That's fine. Uh, no, nothing wrong with that. I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm not mad about that. You know, we didn't have any 20-game winning streaks or anything. Boo-hoo. Okay, we got a billion wins last time, and what did it get us? You don't want to be Mr. Win Team the way... Freaking Seattle Mariners were and everything like that, okay? A, a healthy 100-something wins, that's fine. Doesn't have to be 116. We're all good. Let's take a look at the pitching, see where it's at. Speaking of Zach Thompson, he is our best pitcher by a landslide, at least in terms of ERA. Let's check the core skills, though. Strikeout minus walk rate, our stat of choice. Uh, very simple stat, but really drives the point home about performance. Now, um, I don't know if I've given a run through of like what league averages. I think I did. It's like 15 for uh, starters, I think. Let me take a gander here on fan graphs, and that get that way you guys get get a perspective. Yeah, it's 15 percent. Excuse me, 15 percent league average uh, for starters and 14 percent for relievers. So that's kind of what we're working with there. And then uh, we've got three guys above average, 
Cole Henry's actually our best. Zach Thompson, hilariously our worst. That's so funny. I didn't even know that. I, I hadn't previously checked this when I said he's far and away our best. You want to know why he's our best? There's one distinct reason. You can see it right here. Look at his home run rate. He's basically like half of a few guys. He's half of Alex Wood and Julio Urias. Um, much worse or much better than Gallon and a little bit better than Cole Henry. And that's why his ERA is so low. Because despite the worst strikeout minus walk rate of the group, if you don't allow any home runs, that's really curbing the, the runs allowed. And voila, 284 ERA, but a 401 FIP. Now by FIP, he's still second best. And by war, he's the, the absolute best. He also has the most innings. So there's all sorts of different things that go into these stats. So I don't just look at K minus BB and say, oh, he's the worst, so he's not good. That's uh, that's a stat I really like and trust. Um, and it tells me that like, don't don't pretend that this 284 is like some untouchable type of deal. Well, I just saw something that you guys might've seen off rip, but I am astounded by this. We have 55 losses, right? Poor Zach Gallen has 16% of them. Now that's not the highest percentage on the team. That would go to Julio Urias, who has 24%. However, he has 0% of the dubs. How unfortunate has Zach Gallen been this year? My goodness. This is some Jacob deGrom shit. What is, I mean, actually, okay, Paul, relax with that. He has a 433 ERA. This is, or 410 ERA, 433 FIP. This is nothing like Jacob deGrom. Sorry, I shouldn't even say that because of how great Jacob deGrom is. I can't believe I said that. It was an egregious error. But to be 0-9 on a 96 and 55 team is almost impressive. It really is. My man never gets decisions because he never goes deep in the games. That's the biggest issue. Do I have him on a pitch count? Oh my God, that's why. What the hell am I doing? When did that happen? I, I did not do that. I did not do that. That had to have been some sort of like misclick where I thought it was somewhere else. And oh my gosh, y'all. That he even has 123 innings is, is impressive. But that's why he never gets wins. This has been going on all year. Oh my God. I'm so embarrassed. Don't look at me, I'm hideous. You gotta be bleeping me. <laughs> so he only loses, like when he gives up a few runs. I mean, a couple times he's been blown out, but like the poor guy is like, Give me a fucking break, dude. What am I supposed to do? The fact that he still has a uh, one and a half war, and like I said, has amassed 123 innings because he has the most starts on the team because we also have on occasion highest rested, which is probably always him. What an egregious error. I'll tell you what. That buys him an extra season, no matter. Now, he I don't think I was going to take him off the team for next year anyway, but let's just say that the first year that I'm considering doing that, he gets one extra year beyond that just because of this comically aggressive fuck up. What a blunder. Let's see if we got a dub here. I can't believe that. I, I I can't I cannot believe that. Oh no, we lost. Oh, and this piece of garbage hit two homers against us. Ah, gross. Oh well. Um poor Zach Gallen. My man. I'm sorry, dude. I've done you dirty. I've done you so dirty with the three pitch count. I like how the game was like, that's stupid though, dude. We're st okay, we're gonna we're not gonna pitch him too deep, but three, that's stupid. We're still going to get him a good, healthy, you know, average of about 65 per game, it looks like. Can I get a uh, pitches per game look? Is that available? What if I edit? Is that even... I, don't, I wouldn't even... I, we don't need to go through finding that. We don't need to waste time. Let's look at the relievers. Let's see where the pen is at and see if everyone's sticking around. Sort by innings right now. 
Actually, sort by K minus walk rate. You know what I'm going to do. Josh Taylor has the worst. It has been really rough for him. I will say, though, at one point, he was at a zero. So, at least it's not that anymore. You know? So, that, so he's got that going for him. That at least it's not a flat-out zero. You don't want that. If you can avoid a zero strikeout minus walk rate, you really, really want to avoid that. Anyway, um, yeah, he's been struggling here. The whip is off the charts, and that's the biggest problem for him. But, you know, he still has a 4.52 ERA. Like, it's not that bad. I like how much we mix saves around. We are a nightmare for fantasy folks. They hate me. They hate me with a passion for my lack of consistency with a closer. They're like, can you just pick somebody? Tigers are going to lose to the Orioles again. Come on, dude. We were playing so well. Not that I care if we really win right now because, like, all that does is push our draft pick down. But I like watching my team win, you know. They're rebuilding, but they're, uh, they're, they've, been, they've been pretty good this year. Anyway, Tim Miza doing his thing against lefties. That's the main reason he's in. Great whip against righties. Decent enough ERA. Not, not mad about anything he's got going on. Back to the uh, strikeout minus walk rate. Our newest addition to the team, Jabba Chamberlain, has been a god. And he's been our primary reliever. Um, actually, John King's getting more innings, but he's a 48 stamina versus 16. So it's not because he's like inherently better, although he is having another banger of a year, but it's because he's got much more stamina. So that's cool by me. I'm actually going to do this high leverage him and Fakak and Tapera. Tapera, no, no high leverage for you. We're going to say specialist, I guess. But I want I want Jabba and Fakak when it's when it's hottest. Uh, Peralta's second because of his big strikeout rate. Both of them, both of them have big walk rates. Unfortunately, um, his ERA has oof, it's it's tough. It's tough. I don't know if setup's the right move for him. He might have to go into the more middle relief area, put him down there, and then move Tep into the setup. I know Tep actually has a pretty similar ERA, so you're wondering, well, why, you know, why would you be more confident with him there? And I tell you, I shouldn't be. Home run rate, nope, nope. I'm gonna go right back, put him middle. You're back to setup. Sixth or later, though, you can still come in. You can still come in earlier in the game, especially with that extra stammy that you've got at 40. We want to see that coming in. Kevin Rogers has rebounded. I picked up this card. I was actually pretty excited about him when I was doing the initial team build. Kills lefties, handles his own against righties. I thought he would be a beast. And last year, he just could not get it going. 320 ERA, we're not complaining about that. But I just felt like he was, uh, there was more. Honestly, he's not been better. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I thought, I thought he was worse last year. So ignore everything I just said. I'm completely full of crap. He's actually been quite a bit worse this year, especially when you look at FIP. So I'm just a bold-faced liar. I'm a complete idiot. Jeremy Fakak, though, has been a, a god. No complaints from him. Him and Jabba are our two best relievers, without a doubt. But John King, man, let's give it up for John King. He's been great. He's been a, a kind of a standout surprise. I didn't really know what to expect. He put up this great year last year that I knew was a little bit over his skis for sure at 131 ERA. You never really put that on anybody. Even if Jabba or Fakak put that up, I would expect it to regress. Uh, but he had 262 FIP, which was still fantastic. And the 368 that he has this year, I'm cool with that too. Like I don't have any problems with what he's been doing here. So I'm very pleased with what John King does for us. He's great. Big ups to him. Now, about this Josh Taylor situation, do we want to address it? Or do we want to let him kind of push? Mm. Also, the Tapera home run situation has me concerned with respect to the playoffs primarily. Because he had a home run issue last year, too. Now, he overcame it because... He didn't walk any. Well, he didn't walk as many guys. Nine percent is actually still pretty high, but he's up to eleven percent this year. He struck out a lot more guys. Six points higher at thirty percent versus twenty-four. That was the key difference. So I see a five oh six FIP. I've got some concerns. So I think maybe Taylor and Tapera are on the outs here. Let's go look at our reserve pitchers. 
take a little time check here. Coming up on a half an hour, so we're going to wrap this up. After we see what we can do here, let's go with all pitchers because I wouldn't be averse to putting a, uh, a reliever or a starter there as well. Let's see what he's going for in the auction house. Eh, we'll take 11.69 for him. Nice. Nice. I'm a child. Let's see if somebody will buy on that. And we'll add to our bankroll. Anyway, let's look at everybody who is not active. Edit filter is not active. Do not have to be a future legend. All right. Let's see what we've got here. We've got Nate Jones. Nate Blooms. Um, that's, that's my nickname for him from MLB The Show. No matter how good the cards were, I was the worst with Nate Jones cards. It just did not matter. And he was like, he's very popular in the MLB The Show community. Like, he is a generally seen as a very good card. But for whatever reason, your boy had no, no capability with him whatsoever. I'm looking for a lefty here. I know to, I know uh, Carmona isn't. Uh, uh, Matzik? Uh, Matzik for Taylor. Dick Lines is a lefty. And the puns are endless. And as previously mentioned, I am an infant. Gregory Soto, as, my, as a Tigers fan... Now, he's going to walk the yard, though. That's the scary part. I mean, he is only a 70. He is better against lefties. Not with his command, with his control, that's for sure. What does the... Okay, let's do this first. First things first, Tapera, he gone. You got to hit the bricks, my guy. Sorry. We tried, man. We tried to stick with you. We have two Taperas. Let's get rid of the one that doesn't have any stats. We got to keep our stats, obviously. What's he going for in the auction house? Nothing. Okay, you know what? I'm going to put him up in the auction house. I'm going to put him up cheaper, though. I'm going to help somebody out. You know? There. 100, 104. And if nobody wants him, in three hours, we'll just take our hundo. Okay? I try to help somebody out. Give him a little cheaper. If not, we'll just take our hundo and we'll move on. So, I think I am going to go ahead and try Nate Jones. Maybe I can have better luck with him in OTP than I do in MLB The Show. After all, I'm not in control, so maybe that will that will make it better. I do like Nate, uh, excuse me, Joe Nathan and Tom Wilhelmson here as well. I'm keeping an eye on them. I'm going to go with Jones, and if he struggles and doesn't do well, you know, close the season here, then we will go to maybe Nathan or Wilhelmson for the playoffs. I said Wilhelmson weirdly there for some reason. Don't ask me why. I, I don't have I don't have a good reason for it. All right, middle relief and set up. Let's get you in there. See what you're made of. Submit that just so I don't forget. And then let's see. I wish we could look by handedness in the um, in the market. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do all types right now because there might be. There might be a live series guy that I'm interested in from the left side, although I'm trying to think of the best lefty silvers, and I'm kind of blanking on who that might be. Paul Fry for the aforementioned Baltimore Orioles. Okay, he's kind of like a supercharged um, Gregory Soto. Like, he just is unbelievable against lefties. I do like that. I'll tell you what, I'm going to buy this off rip just for the future even. Even if we don't use him right now, we're going to scoop that instantly. Barney Schultz, are you righty or lefty? You're righty. You're pretty good. Ah, you're double. You're double your normal price, though. I don't. No thanks. Bill Daly. I like that movement. I mean, that's. Now we already pre replaced Tapera, but that's literally the opposite of Tapera, with the movement. And so we would not be giving up the home runs. That is for damn sure. Will Smith. I got a bias against Will Smith that also relates to MLB The Show, and I just. I, I can get over it with Nate Jones, but I just don't think I can with Will Smith. I'm sorry, dude. It's not you. It's me. It, it's definitely you. Uh, let's see. Pete Fairbanks. He's not as good as I thought he would be. I thought he'd be. I thought he'd be kind of kind of juiced up. He's these. And then let's see. Uh, any other lefties here? Oh wow, he's come down, huh? Minus five points on the year. Whew, that's tough. He just hasn't had the control. Has had. Hasn't had his control. I can talk. I, I've got talking abilities. He is pretty cheap. I wonder if maybe we should stow one away. Nah. 
I think he'll stay cheap. He's not he's not a candidate to be upgraded anytime soon. I think he's been pitching better than he did at the beginning of the year, but not well enough that they're going to like turn around and upgrade him, in my opinion. Um, we don't want to go through too much here. Let's see. Ali Perez is always kind of a key lefty. Really, really good against lefties. You know, not the end of the world against righties, but also not very good. And then Zach Britton I'll look at as well. Between the two, I think I'd rather have Ollie. What's his price at? If we find all of his. 140. I'll cop one for 140. I'm curious about Paul Fry versus Ollie. Hmm. Well, obviously... Oh, wait, I, I didn't move Josh Taylor off yet because I thought Paul Fry was actually going to default to going on the team there, and I was like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that, but I'm all good. I didn't put I didn't put what's-his-head down yet. I kind of love this 128-102 against lefties. I wonder if... I wonder if we risk it a little bit and let Miza kind of go into middle relief because he's not too bad against righties. Like, you have the 401 ERA, you know, you don't love that. But the whip being sub one is clean. In fact, it's much better than he is against lefties. Now, we're talking nine innings. He has 26 and two thirds total. Parsing it up too much isn't really fair um, as is, but it's hilarious that he's walked 21% of the lefties he's faced. Tell you what, I'm going to put him in the gen pop here. I don't know why I'm using a prison reference by saying I'm going to take him out of the uh, lefty specialist. Like, uh, what is that, solitary confinement then? What, 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 what is this analogy, dude? Taylor, hit the bricks. My favorite phrase for some reason. I don't know what the hell that means. Be older, Paul. Just be older. Have older, more out-of-date phrases, you absolute dweeb. Yep, and then we're going to go with Fry. I'm just, I'm really intrigued by how devastating he is against lefties. So we're going to go double special. I wish I wouldn't have said special. Of the three that I have roasted myself for, the three things I've said, special was the worst. Oh my God. What's my problem? I don't know why you guys watch, but I again, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We've got, we got a nice little tight viewership for the for the Silver Studs, okay? And I, I appreciate y'all. I'm not going anywhere. For those of you that continue to be loyal and you comment, we're keeping this series going. You might have been thinking, well, oh, maybe he's just going to stop doing it. No, 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 no. It was just because of the trade deadline. I'm loving this series. I'm really, really loving doing this. So hope you guys continue to watch. All right, that's the team that we're going to go with for the rest of the year here. Finish up strong. We're going to get in the playoffs. I'm still... Um, kind of ironing out the way I want to do the playoffs. Obviously, I want to do it much differently than we did last week where we can build some suspense. But we, we since we choked, I was just like, I'm just going to show them. I had the sad otter up there, and we just, we just looked at the choke. Let's do a couple other things here. I know we're getting long here. We're about to get on 40 minutes. But I wanted to show you we got some guys in the leaders on the sidebar here, which is fun because we didn't have that last time. I think we had like one or two guys uh, interestingly enough, Zach Gallon was one in the wins column, and then he gets three pitch, he gets a three pitch count, so he can't make anything go right this year. Uh, but because we have a full season now, we got Pete Rose, John Beckwith in the batting average, Kyle Tucker for ribbies, Alex Rios for batter war. Like I said, I think he'll be in the MVP conversation. Although Bobby Doerr is gonna have a lot to say about that. I think there's no shot for Rios. Cy Young coming in. Oh my goodness. This one, Hundo Cy Young. I, I wonder if we face this guy. I want to see. Because I would love if our team just said, you know what? You're not that good. You're not that good. But you are, but you're not. You know? You are, but are you though? You know? Anyway, I'm rambling. Okay. Um, oh. Eight scoreless. Okay. Okay. I'll just go fuck myself. You know what? Nice season record, idiots. That's all I've got. That's all I've got there. I mean, Alex Wood pitched his ass off. He's like, I'm facing Cy Young out here. How's it? Now, he's been Jacob deGrom. I said that about Zach Gallon earlier, especially before I realized my blunder. No, no. My man right here is getting completely deGrom. That is brutal that he has eight losses. He is 11 and 8. Actually, is that his season record? Okay. 
I did my custom stats here. I maybe still should have had win loss in here. Like I, we don't have to prioritize it, but I should still have it in here. I think I'm going to edit uh, the spore pitching thing here uh, in the future. I'm not going to do it right now on, on screen. Yeah, so he's 13 and 9. Look at all these losses he's had. What a joke. Get him some run support. Unbelievable. Anyway, not what we were trying to look at. I also want to look at our all-stars. So I was going to go back here to the email that gave it to us. And what, what league are we in? I keep forgetting. We are in the N1, the NC, which is the second one. And let's see. We had Zach Thompson, Jabba Chamberlain, John King. Had a baby John King. Joe Rudy. I think Joe Rudy's a two-time. Joe Rudy, two-time. Move over, Dr. Disrespect. Two-time MV, er, uh, MVP. Two-time All-Star, excuse me. Anybody else? Anybody else for the old Texas Weens? John Beck with baby. Kyle Tucker. You know Rios made it too, right? Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. You love to see it. Let's freaking go. Look at all these Tim Andersons. This is funny. Like You're starting to see some clusters here. A couple Bregmans, three Tim Andersons, Spider-Man memeing all over the place. They're like, what the hell's going on here? Ooh, what satch is this? You know, I, I, I'm not going to do it and, and don't comment that you want me to do it, make an exception or whatever, but I almost said I want to have one bronze exception to use this card. We'll do that another time, though. We'll do an all-bronze team at some point once we play like several seasons with the, with the silvers just to use that satch. I don't think there's a silver satch, is there? Let's see if it's in our league, if there is. No, the rookie is that. The special edition going to be a hundo. Check the market for any other pages. I believe there was a silver one last year, if I recall correctly. Correct me if I'm dead ass wrong on that. But um, there's only two right now. Let's just let's just buy this one. Let's just buy the one hundo. He's basically like a silver and a half. No big deal, okay? There's still a silver tendency. So we got a good handful of all-stars. Um, I like that. That's awesome. You know what was funny? And I don't know if it's something that's like perfect team-wide. But in my other league, in my on my other main account, um, the exact same headline happened. Trout not to be denied in home run challenge. So tell me, in your league, did Trout win the home run derby? And did it say Trout not to be denied in home run challenge? That would be kind of interesting if it was like, if Trout's in the league, he's winning the home run derby. I would, I would be fascinated by that. Anyway, enough rambling. You are caught up. The team has made some changes. Welcome to the squad, Bruce Petway. Uh, Nate Jones, Paul Fry, and that's it, right? Oh, and Ike Boone, welcome. You guys are ready. We've got this on lock. We are in the playoffs. We don't have to worry about anything. We, we are 10 games clear. Tomorrow, playoff time. We got to do it. We got we to gotta come through better than we did last week. Be there or be square. Well, I don't know what I'm saying about that because there's nowhere for you to be because I'm not going to live stream it. I'm going to record a video about it. But anyway, playoffs tomorrow. See you then.